whichever way, whichever seat you want. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everybody to Williams Stadium for our exciting announcement regarding our men's basketball program. I'm Alan York, radio broadcaster for the men's basketball team. Uh, coming up in a little bit, we'll have opportunity for the media to uh, meet with the coach and Jeff and Jerry as well. There will be no public Q&A uh, during the press conference. So without further delay, I'd like to bring up President Jerry Falwell, Jr. Thank you, Alan. This is an exciting day for all of us. I was just rushed over the mountain to get here from Lexington and was with a group of college presidents there and got here just in time. But we, um, Jeff, the press release said you were going to announce who the new coach is. So he spent the last three, I don't know, three weeks, a month or two on the road, traveling, um, working hard to make the best decision for Liberty University. And so I think I want to give you the honor of, of making the formal announcement, and I'll follow up later. Okay. Thank you very much, President. Um, is this loud? Too loud? Is it okay? Um, let me just say, first of all, thank you for being here today for this special occasion. Uh, it's a big day for Liberty University. It's a big day for Liberty basketball, and I couldn't be more excited uh, than to stand in front of you today and uh, introduce our new coach. Uh, I have a few thanks that I want to give. First of all, to President Falwell for his continued support of not just the athletics department, but this entire university. And it's changing, thank you. It doesn't change monthly, it doesn't change weekly, it changes daily. And it's a real honor to serve you through this process. I want to thank Collegiate Sports Associates, Todd Turner and Dave Odom, our search firm. I think the search firms bring great value. They can do things that ADs can't do. They know people that uh, I don't know. They know people ADs don't know. They have phone numbers of coaches. They have relationships with ADs. They have relationships with coaches. And there's a whole lot of background information that comes out uh, during a search. I couldn't do it all myself. ADs can't do it. And uh, they've been terrific to work with and uh, certainly appreciate everything they did. I want to thank Mickey Garitti. Mickey's my senior associate athletic director. Um, he went with me all over the country for the last three weeks as we have visited coaches, and he has served as a great resource and a sounding board for me. So, Mickey, thank you for your time and, and effort. I want to talk briefly about the process. Um, I believe in keeping a search confidential. Not everybody does that. I think it's the right reason, the right way to do things. Why do I feel that way? Because the hiring process for a coach, it's not a game. It's not fun and games. It's hard. And I feel like it's my job to protect their identity and their integrity as we go through the process. They have a relationship with their team, with their AD, with their fans, with their donors, and with their university. And I feel like it's my responsibility to, to watch out for that, that relationship. So I'm not one of these people that likes to give five names and this is who we're talking to. We're not trying to boast about who the candidates are and who we're talking to. We're trying to find the right fit, the right coach, the right person to lead our program. And I think it's really important to do that without harming anyone in the process. And that, unfortunately, that does happen in this business. Over the last three weeks, I talked to a total of nine coaches. They were all Christian men, all excellent basketball coaches. Seven of them had head coaching experience either as sitting head coaches and with multiple 20 game wins, I'm not talking about just any very successful coaches, or guys like the guy beside me that has been the head coach, but are now serving an institution of one of the power five conferences as a, as a top flight assistant. I talked to two assistant coaches that did not have head coaching experience. Because when you make a hire, you gotta spread the net pretty wide to start with because you're not sure where it's gonna go. And you gotta cover all your bases. And those two assistant coaches are going to be superstars. They're Christian men and great, great coaches. Mickey and I went into seven homes to talk to the coaches. We sat and talked for several hours at kitchen tables and lounge chairs and comfortable couches. We ate all kinds of snacks and puddings, iced tea, a lot of water. Why do we do that? When I went through the process, every coach said, I've never had anybody interview me in my home before, but I like it. 
And I like it too. I think it gives you a picture of a person that you don't see. A, a, a typical thing will happen is a guy will go in a hotel room and, and, and bring fly guys in and, you know, knock it out that way. I think it's more to it than that. I think we need to see who they are with their wife, who they are with their children, see the relationship between them. So we did that. And we talked about their faith and their ability to lead a basketball program. We talked about every facet, recruiting, offense, defense, transition game, sports, uh, uh, the sports medicine part, the training, strength and conditioning, nutrition. And we talked about everything. And they all took three or four hours, but it was well worth it. And to be honest with you, I believe that all seven of these head coaches that we talked to could have come and done a good job here, been successful, because they're successful where they are and they're great coaches. But my responsibility was find, to find the right one, to find the right man, the right Christian man, the right coach that I felt was best qualified to come in here and build a powerhouse basketball program for Liberty University. Once those interviews were completed, there was no question in my mind that the right coach for Liberty was Richie McKay. Why do I believe that? He's proven himself over and over, and there'll be stats and you can see things about all the places he's been and coached and won. He's proven himself that way. But more importantly to me through the process, he's proven himself here at Liberty. Um, as our coach for two years, he proved himself. As a Christian, as a coach, as a recruiter, everything. His second year, he won 23 games, had an overall record of 39 and 28. Only three coaches in the history of Liberty basketball have had a winning percentage through their career. He's one of three. The 23 wins ties the school record uh, for most wins in a year for as a Division I school. No, no uh, ill will intended here, but in that 23-win season, we did go up to Charlottesville and beat Virginia. We were 12-6 and six in the conference. And you know what else that year? I don't know if people remember this. We were number 48 in the country in recruiting. Our recruiting class was ranked 48th in the country. We had verbal commitments from three players that when he left for, Rich, uh, for, for Virginia, decided not to come. One went to play at Arizona State, was very successful. One played in the A-10, for those of you that know basketball, and was one of the better players in the A-10 conference. And another player was a guard on a team that went to the Final Four. So, shows me the ones he brought in and these guys too. He knows what he's doing. There's always a learning curve for new coaches. For Richie, his only learning curve is going to be really what's happened at Liberty in the last six years. And thanks to President Falwell, there's been, that's a lot. But he knows Liberty. He loves Liberty. When UVA completed their season on March the 22nd, schools started calling this guy from some of those big five conferences. And I found out about it, and we talked about it. And he told me, he said, I'm not going to talk to anybody until you tell me I'm not the coach at Liberty. For me, that showed me his commitment and desire to be here. So six years ago, as of today, actually, he left to go to Virginia. You know, sometimes you think you're having a bad day, and you look back one day, and you say, what? That was a good day. So he goes up to Virginia, had the great honor and privilege of working with one of his great friends, and he spent the last six years working with one of the best coaches in the country, Tony Bennett, National Coach of the Year, Tony Bennett. Their success has been phenomenal. It's well documented. Two ACC championships, number two in the country, top scoring defense in the country, maybe the best defense in the country with, when, when it's all said and done, certainly one of the top two. I've seen a lot of articles over the past six years about this guy and about him coaching with Tony Bennett. And the articles keep talking about the fact that there's a second head coach on the bench helping Coach Bennett get it done. It's this guy right here. We all know about his reputation as an offensive whiz. I'll tell you a quick story. We played Clemson his second year. They were either 12-0 and and ranked 15th in the country or they were 15-0 and and ranked 12th in the country. I can't remember. But we played a really great, a great game. They hit a couple shots late in the last 30 seconds and beat us by a point or two. And as I was going off the, the court to go to the post-game press conference, the AD, Terry Don Phillips at, at Clemson at that time, he sprinted over to me. And he said, where in the world did you find that coach? He did things against us that nobody's done. So let me say this. When you look at his record here, success, recruiting, not only here but before that, as an offensive coach and all the many, many accolades that go with that. 
And now you combine that with going to Virginia, serving with Tony Bennett, building that kind of uh, top-level defense, teaching that defense, learning that defense. I'm telling you, you put that, this offensive mind with the experience of his, with his defense now, it's a very deadly combination. And because of that combination, today he is a better man and he is a much better coach than he was six years ago. Please join me in welcoming Richie McKay. Thank you. I don't know if the camera saw that assist that I gave Jerry Jr., but one of my few assists ever. Um, I'd just like to start by, uh, by thanking uh, President Falwell. Um, I'm truly honored and, uh, and blessed to have the opportunity to come back to Liberty and uh, for his confidence in my family and I and the staff that we're going to have. Uh, I just I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate it, and we're going to serve you well. And I'd also like to share that same thanks to Jeff Barber. He's, uh, I think it speaks to his character when I left six years ago to the day. How ironic is that? Um, that I could see in his face that he was a little disappointed. And uh, to, be, uh, to have that relationship restored and, uh, and to see his trust in me and my family, it's, uh, it's a blessing to me. So thank you, Jeff. I appreciate your confidence in me. Um, I want to say it. Now, in front of everyone, I also want to thank Dale Lair and, uh, and his wife, Brenda, and Ethan, and Tim, and his sons, because uh, I had a chance to coach son on our team. I, I think Dale Lair is a tremendous man, and I know he added value to this campus community and to Lynchburg, and, uh, and I love him. And uh, there will never be a, a negative word spoken about him, because I know his heart and the integrity in which he, uh, he lives his life. Um, this, is, this is a little difficult because uh, I see his wife back here, but I want to thank Tony Bennett for, uh, for it, you know Tony Bennett is a great coach. He, it's, it's well documented. Um, he's he's as, as good, if not better, than what you read. But what you don't know is he's a better man. And he's five years younger than me, five and a half, shoots a lot better than me. Um, he's a lot fitter than, anyway, I could go on, but he... He's, he's a dear friend. I, I love him to death, and I would not be standing in front of you without uh, being with him for as long as I was. So uh, his wife, Laurel's here. Laurel, would you just wave your hand, because I know you won't stand. And uh, <laughs> I learned a ton from him, and uh, I learned a ton. And not only the way he coaches his team, but the way he leads his life. And, uh, and I'm excited about seeing if we can't uh, put that all together and build a, sp a special program here. Ronnie Weidman is also here. Ronnie was on our staff. Uh, Ronnie's a dear friend. Thanks for coming, man. I appreciate it. Will you raise your hand? Thank you. Um, I'm sure I'm going to forget someone. I'm doing this without notes. I left them in my car. Uh, but I also wanted to thank my, uh, my lovely wife, Julie. It's 25 years in August, and uh, she's been... She's been the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm going to ask her to stand. I don't know if she will. Honey, would you stand and just say hello? I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. He out kicked his coverage. I've heard it before. Um, my two nieces are here, Sierra and Leah Summers. Will you stand up? They're, they're students at Liberty, uh, senior and a sophomore, junior, CC. Junior, okay. Uh, and then uh, my two boys are here, uh, Gabriel and Luke. They're 15 and 17. Stand up, fellas. <laughs> and last but not least, I saved the princess for last. She's my oldest daughter. She is a sophomore here. And uh, if for anyone that is doubting my belief and commitment at Liberty, I can show you the checkbook. It's, uh, it's close to about 60-some thousand now, so... Uh, my daughter is, uh, she's a beautiful young lady, and she's blessed our lives greatly. Ellie, would you stand up? Um, I, I told the, the team we had a brief meeting uh, when, right before we came down here, and uh, I told these guys that they're ours. Uh, I'm really excited. I've, I've been a fan of Liberty since I left, and, and it's because of the mission that 
uh, your father had. And I was privileged to be hired by Doc. And uh, I love that man. I was inspired by him in just the short time I knew him. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about how you've carried on his legacy and even further that this place is so different. But I share with those guys that I, I believe anything can happen here. And they're a part of Liberty University, its athletic department, and its men's basketball program. And I would hope that the way we represent uh, you and our program in this institution is, is something that everyone would be excited about and, uh, and proud to be affiliated with. So I can't wait to coach you guys. And, uh, and I'm excited what God's going to do in and through uh, your lives here at Liberty. Uh, lastly, I will, uh, I'll just tell you briefly, when uh, the decision uh, to come back, it, it, uh, it, it was twofold. Number one, I never left Dick Bennett, Tony's dad, who was a mentor of mine, is a mentor of mine, said you should never run from something, you should always be running towards something. And I never left because Liberty wasn't enough. It, I didn't care about positioning myself for a bigger job or a better job. I left to go and be obedient to what I thought was our responsibility, and that was to go serve a friend who asked me to come along. And, and we were faithful to that, and along the way, I got blessed. I got blessed. My life got changed. And as different as this place is, and I don't even recognize some of the buildings, and, but it's, I've, I'm different as well. And as, uh, as Jeff alluded to, I think I'm a, think I'm a better coach, think I'm a, a better uh, husband. You'd have to ask Julie. I think I'm a better father by the time spent in Charlottesville. And I hope you see that in the way we lead our program. And, uh, and just to assure you, and I'm sure there'll be some naysayers and people wondering if my words will be genuine and sincere. And I, I just ask you to give us a chance. I feel like I'm, uh, I'm the, 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 the most blessed coach in the country right now. I'm coaching at a place that I think is the, the greatest school in the world that you could go to. And I'm working for unbelievable leaders. And, uh, and even in this department, uh, I, there's a bunch of coaches here that I recognize from before. And uh, I'm, I'm in awe and admire the, the success that uh, different coaches have had. I, I was rooting for Coach Gill and winning the Big South Championship and going to the playoffs. We'll give that up for Coach. For Kerry Green and the, the unbelievable unparalleled success he's had, Chain, but I can go on, but I'd leave someone out. But uh, I'm just excited and privileged to be a part of this family again, to work with you coaches, to work with you players. And uh, lastly, thank you for being here. Uh, I hope uh, I hope we'll see um, we'll see this program uh, reach a level that uh, not even you thought was possible. So thank you very much, and have a blessed day. Yet yesterday when Jeff and I called Richie on the phone, I said, Richie, you've been gone long enough. And we, I did the same thing he did. I left Liberty, went to UVA for law school, came back. So we have to do that sometimes to, to learn something. But we, uh, we're just so proud to have Julie back and, and to have you as our head basketball coach. And by the way, the tuition's included now. That's part, <laughs> part, part of the deal. But I want to congratulate Jeff Barber on absolutely doing a fantastic job in this search and, and uh, in a tough situation. And so we appreciate that very much, Jeff. And I, um, I, we're going to turn it over now to, to Alan and, and uh, move on to the, to the press conference, correct? Yep. Thank you so much, Richie. We're honored to have you back.